Cameron Park started in the 1950s as a small ranching community. When I came here in 1965 selling bare land, there were three homes and one gas station. Nothing else, nothing but prairie. Thanks to the help of real estate developers like Jerry Burke, the town began to grow. In 1967, Cameron Park became the home of the Western-themed Sam's Town. It soon became a hotspot for travelers to and from Lake Tahoe. In 1986, Jerry Burke saw an opportunity and he built his own Western-themed shopping and dining center across the street from Sam's Town. During construction, he happened to catch a news story about the closing of Frontier Village in San Jose. One of the park's main attractions was the Frontier Village Railroad. I was laying in bed watching on TV that they're going to close the train up. And if anybody wants to come for a last ride, so I did. I fell in love with the train and I bought it. With the addition of the train, Burke Junction quickly became a family favorite. The, the kids totally enjoyed the train. Uh, they, there was always a, a look of excitement on their faces when they were in line to get on the train. Many of them had their parents ride with them on the train because they were a little bit nervous of doing it by themselves. It provided a total family experience. We would come down here, beg mom and dad to bring us down here, and we'd hang out here because it was a safe place to be. The train, along with Jerry Burke's charismatic nature, attracted business owners that remain there to this day. I've been here 17 years now in Burke Junction. Opened my shop in 93. Jerry Burke, the owner, who was a character himself, he played a huge part of it. That's what brought a lot of people in. Jerry Burke, first met Jerry Burke, very colorful man. Always had a joke or a saying or something, always very colorful and amusing. He was very strong in promoting activities and events for the center. He was very into the Western themes. Jerry Burke and some of the other uh, employees of the place used to dress up Western attire. We used to have gunfights. I had a machine gun and we'd pull up there and we'd rob the robbers that were robbing the train. I used to ride the train here with my dog. He'd sit there and we'd wear our little scarves and he'd shake hands with all the kids. And I'd shoot him and he'd fall dead and then he'd bounce up again. And, I mean, we were back in show business. It was wonderful. When he built Burke Junction, he put his whole heart into it. This was his baby. And there was a lot of sentimental attachment to it. I know whenever he retired and left here, that was, took a big piece of him there. Sadly, shortly after Jerry Burke retired, train rides stopped and the train and tracks fell into disrepair. Burke Junction gave the community a center or a spirit where people could go and have a good time. Uh, when the train was taken away, it almost took the heart away because it happened along the same time that uh, Sam's Town went away. And suddenly from being a center of interest, Cameron Park became a, a quick place to grab some fuel in your car and keep on going to Lake Tahoe. In late 2009, a local developer decided that Cameron Park needed its heart back. So he purchased Burke Junction and began the daunting task of restoring the train back to its original glory. After sitting idle for nine years, the train and track were in need of serious repair. Almost all of the railroad ties were in poor condition. We basically started off at scratch because these weren't consistent. We found out that they were basically almost, everyone was bad. It was easier to take the whole rail apart, move it to the side, take the old ones out, drop in new ones, and space them properly. Almost 900 railroad ties had to be replaced, and 4,000 feet of steel track needed to be realigned bolt by bolt before the train could travel around Burke Junction again. The renovation of the 45-year-old air-cooled Corvair engine proved to be difficult as well. Having a custom machine like this is probably the biggest challenge because you can't go to Cragen's or, or AutoZone and get a part. You have to make it or figure it out. So that's a, it's a huge challenge. But excitement in the community began to build as the work progressed. The train is attracting people. They'll just see us working on it, and from nowhere, they, they come out of the woodworks. News of the upcoming grand reopening even spread to nearby Sacramento. We want to tell you about some local history that's coming back and some just old-fashioned family fun. It's returning to Cameron Park's Burke Junction. The old miniature steam train that used to take kids around the property is about to go back into service. After countless hours of engine and track repair, Engine 9 was ready for its first run. We're making sure today that the brakes work and that the engine will propel the train around the tracks. This will be the first time this train has gone around this track in somewhere between seven and 10 years, so it's pretty exciting. The moment of truth is upon us. We'll see what happens. 
After a few minor adjustments, the train wheels turn for the first time in nine years. Miniature train specialist Terry Gold manned the controls for the test run. I was kind of nervous because I, it's been a while since I ran this train on this track. Oh, really nervous. We basically had lubricated everything. We made sure the track is well lubricated. We had passengers on the back of the train and had no problem pulling the people around the track at all. It, the turns a little on the tight side and you know we got that motion going on and the whistle and people are having a good old time. With the engine running smooth and the track tried and true, all that was left was a much needed makeover. Nine was showing its age. Over the next two months, everything was sanded, painted, and polished to perfection. On August 21st of 2010, the grand reopening had finally come. Burt Junction was filled with excited faces, waiting in anticipation for the train's inaugural loop. Jerry Burke and those lucky enough to hold a VIP ticket boarded the train and waited for the roar of the engine when... It won't start. It won't start. Okay. Oh my god. Did he do the fuel? Well, it's not, it's not starting, Tom. The starter is not starting. Jumper cables. For a while, it seemed that a half a year's worth of hard work was all for naught. But after 30 minutes of frantic problem solving, a dead battery was replaced and... Finally, after seven months of dedicated work and craftsmanship, the train was rolling out of the station, and Cameron Park had its heart back. What a thing like that train does is provide a unique uh, identity, and it's a, kind of a, an icon that people can hold on to. Those are the sorts of things that give a community a sense of place. A sense of place is essential to uh, community bonding and cohesion. And things like that train are, are very important ingredients to that. It's important to have places like this to give people value, to make them feel part of a community and have respect for it. Because the, we live in such a fast pace where people are always in a hurry, in a rush, rush, rush with fast food and all these different things that go on today. Where here you can actually take the time to slow down and have lunch or dinner, whatever, and walk with your children, and the train will be part of it again, too. And this is what makes it a community of yesteryear, of the way it used to be. And those are values I think that's important to instill in the children today. It, it provides a heart for Cameron Park. It provides a place for people to go and totally enjoy themselves, and bringing back to Cameron Park a real feeling that we have somewhere to go, and we have a center, and Burke Junction, I think, will be that center. Thank mm -hmm. you.